Hi guys, this is Hung Vango. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, Maria Otega here. She lent me her canvas to create this makeup look for you. We did a little haircut and Dawson did a great job on this shaggy bob. And uh, I create a little makeup look talking about how to correct in the skin and everything. I hope you enjoy the video. Maria is another fellow makeup artist I met through Sue Park. And so she let me play with the lips and all the shape and I hope you like it. You know, it's just makeup, you can wash it off. You know, that's the part about makeup. We can have fun with it. I hope you enjoy the video. Give the channel always a lot of love. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And don't forget to follow Maria, myself, my team on Instagram as well. Thank you. So Maria is a friend of mine, so she just let us cut the hair as well. Dawson just give her a beautiful shaggy bob haircut. I think it looked gorgeous. So now we do the makeup. As you can see Maria right now, her skin is have a little bit more redness, rosacea on the skin. So all the product I'm using today is always going to be calming and just hydrating. And that's what I'm trying to do. The first product I'm using is Kodali Beauty Elixir Mist. This is a very calming, pore tightening skin prep mist. It's very hydrating before or after makeup and anytime. I'm going to use Tatcha the Kisu Lip Mask for lips. And this is a non sticky jelly lip mask. It contains plant based squalane and it helps to soothe, soften, and plump the lips. It's quite a beautiful lip mask and it is vegan formula. For eye cream, I'm going to use the IS Clinical Youth Eye Complex. This is one of my go-to eye cream. It does provide hydration and soothe under the eye area. It has peptide and antioxidant ingredients. It's lightweight and it's suitable for all skin type and fantastic for under makeup. For serum, also from IS Clinical, this is Hydracool Serum. This one provides deep hydration and it does calm, cool, and soothe the skin. And if you have hydrated skin or even you go to the sun or anything like that, it's great and it's really good for dry skin. For moisturizer, I'm going to use from Augustinet Butter, the Rich Cream. This is a rich moisturizer. It helps to hydrate, dry, and irritate the skin. It's ideally for dry and sensitive skin. And this one is a vegan formula as well. I always like to put a lot of moisturizer on the face. And that way I can massage, try to depop, do anything before makeup. For sunscreen, I'm going to use from the wear company, Sunny Mineral Sunscreen SPF 40. Real safe mineral based sunscreen. And this is very hydrating as well. And it does have hyaluronic acid. That's for skincare benefit. And it's tone evening out formula. So this is great for someone with olive skin or deeper skin. You don't have that white cast at all but you still can use for 
light skin as well, pale skin as well. You still can use this sunscreen. And I like to put sunscreen everywhere on the eyelid and the neck as well. I'm going to use Makeup Forever Step 1 Primer Color Corrector. This one is to cancel out some of the redness here. With the foundation I'm using, it's more full of coverage. It's still gonna cover, but for someone who do not like foundation and just wear concealer, this is a great way. Just use a little color corrector to take out some of the redness before you put your concealer or anything else. So you see that just a little bit and it can help you cancel out some of the redness on the face. You see that this just really helped you easy to cancel out. So if Maria doesn't like to wear foundation, she just use this color corrector and then cancel out some of the red and then you just use concealer for everywhere else, you know, does she want to cover more. But the first step, you should take out some of the redness and this is a great way to use. I know it's so many steps that I'm doing, but I use this how I do like a, a perfect makeup for me so that's why i do all these steps but if you're at home you don't have time you don't have to go all the steps but for me when i show i like to show every single step and you can cut out any way you want you know i just like to show the step because a lot of requests that they like the makeup real time and this is the most real time that i can give you every single step that i do for complexion i'm going to use the nars Cosmetic Radiant Creamy Color Corrector, the Lancome Ten Ultra Ultrawear 24 Hour Long Wear Foundation, also for the concealer from Lancome as well, Ten Ultra Ultrawear All Over Concealer. I use two shades, the lighter shade I use mainly on the eye area, a little bit on the T zone, and the deeper concealer everywhere in the face. You've seen that me use all the time before. I like to use the concealer for pinpoint matching exactly the foundation. Maria's complexion is pretty amazing. Uh, after the color corrector, everything, she doesn't need much foundation at all. So I think the foundation alone will cover everything. But just in case, I use concealer as well, maybe around the nose or any other area. To start, I would like to use a little bit color corrector first. Again, the foundation, they cover really well you don't really need much a color corrector as well but i say i'm gonna do every single step and so that's where if someone who have a little bit more dark circle or color discoloration around the eye that's how you would do it and if someone who have already flawless skin you can skip all these steps you don't have to leave any kind of like too many step comments so first, you just view a little bit of color corrector around the eye area. And this way, you can even out some of the shadow around the eye here before you put foundation on. So I just put just a little bit like that. Maria have beautiful skin. I'm not gonna use too much foundation, but I'm gonna use a little bit of this foundation. It's one of my favorite. As you can see earlier already, I prepped the skin a lot. So even though this is more a uh, natural matte finish, it's still gonna look a little more radiant, more luminous than it's more matte, just because the skincare 
product I use underneath. But again, that's about foundation. It's gonna change the formula based on how much skincare product you use. So what I'm doing is I just put a little more around where she have all the redness or rosacea, and then the rest I'm just gonna blend it out. So I put a little bit in the center first, and that's all the foundation I'm gonna use, and then the rest I'm just gonna blend it out. And this is a full coverage foundation. So you only use a little bit at a time. You see that just a little bit, it covers really well and you don't need too much. And it transfer humidity resistant. So this is great foundation for the hot weather. A little bit foundation, it blend out really, really well talking about foundation as well. So if Maria is the type of person who do not do contour or highlight or anything like that, I would go maybe a shade deeper than this or two. It's just because we are going to do contour and you know like sculpting. If you use too dark the foundation and then you do on top of that overall complexion, she's gonna look very dark. So that's why overall now she look a little brighter and then all those sculpting is gonna bring all dimension back and then the color gonna be just perfect. So that's a way to keep in mind. So when you choose foundation, you have to keep in mind that what your plan is, you know, if you're gonna do one of those who do bronzer and stuff like that, then try to use the shade a little lighter just for that reason, you know. And another idea is have, if you could afford, you know, use more than one foundation. Instead, you know, a lot of deeper skin or olive skin, I would prefer to use two shades, maybe a little center, a little different color than the perimeter. And that way the face look more dimension. Otherwise it can look too flat if you use just one color. As I already guessed earlier, Maria looked pretty flawless without any concealer. So I'm using a little bit on under the eye area. And then a little deeper, just mainly around the nose area, but I'm not gonna put too much. She doesn't need any more concealer than that. But the plan I'm trying to do today is give Maria more a fuller makeup look, not just like a little finger painting makeup today. So that's why I do a little more than what it is. And basically that's what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna do a little bit more concealer here around here because I think it's gonna help to lift everything up a little bit. I'm going to use Chanel Beauty Le Beige Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. I use the deeper shades, mainly, you know, just to scoop and bring back some dimension on the face. And a little bit on the forehead first. So keep in mind all this area that where you do color corrector, you know, like primer, uh, all these parts to cancel out all the redness, rosacea she had. So when you do everything else, don't do swiping motion because this means you're going to take away everything you're trying to do. So when you do contour or blush anything, just do tippling. So this is you still press the product in there. You don't take away anything that you put on earlier because if you do this way, 
you're gonna take away all those foundation, everything, the red on the cheek and everything, it's gonna pop it up again. So remember, it's keep doing like this way. It's give you the effect of the sculpting without bringing back all the redness. So if you see people try to do like this, try to do this way. That way you're not gonna take away everything out. You just layer the product on and it's actually gonna stay put a lot better than doing this way. And on the bottom here, because you don't have any of the redness, you can do that. But on the cheek, I would try to do this way. So it doesn't move anything else underneath there. I'm gonna do the same under the side. For powder, I'm going to use Huda Beauty Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder Banana Bread. This is a medium coverage, it's matte finish. And I'm gonna keep the skin pretty matte. Again, even when powder, those area, I would do recommend to do this instead, like, you know, try to minimize on the swiping motion around the redness area. For bronzer, I'm going to use Dior Forever Natural Bronzing Powder. This is a long wear, light coverage, and it is matte finish. Again, you see the bronzer I'm doing? Again, just a little bit like this. Dab, dab, dab. That area you can swipe in, but for this area, I would just recommend do the same technique that I say. You don't want to do swiping too much. And this one here, you can do like that. For eyebrow, I'm going to use three products from Trio Beauty. The Micro Feel Brow Pencil, and I'm either gonna use soft or medium. So right now I'm holding the medium, but if it's too dark, I might go to the soft. It's just because the color can look different when I apply. And then the Trio Beauty Brow Swipe Pen. So this is like, if I wanna detail the eyebrow, you don't have to use the pen. And then this is a brow lifting wax with lamination. So the first thing I'm gonna do when someone brow like this, I think I do recommend you to put a little brow wax first. So you can see the shape a little bit before you draw them. Because Maria's eyebrow is quite coarse, so you see it's, it does have a this on my. So you wanna lift up a little bit before you even draw the eyebrow. So this is the best way for you to see the shape first. So even like this, and now you can draw wherever you want, however you like. So what I'm gonna do is then I will see, okay, maybe a few them a little more here. I think I'm gonna go for soft brown because I think this is too dark. A little bit there first. And then I think because you know the, the, the gel that you give it up, that you put it on, it helps you lift the brow already. So you see the shape so much better. And um, a lot of time we just start drawing, but we don't know exactly the shape because when you gel the brow, it's gonna make a difference already. So it's good to do this way and you can see the shape so much better. I know I just repeat the same thing, but you know what I'm trying to say. And the best way to do brow is you do a little bit at a time. So this way you can mimic the, 
the hair stroke is better than you draw the whole line. And a little bit right here. Let's see again for me. Do a little bit in here. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Next, I'm using the marker. Just detail a little bit. You don't have to do this step at all. For me, I just like to detail a little bit more after. And just a little bit anywhere that I want to make a little hair stroke. Just an extra step, a lot of people don't want to do it. But for me, I think it's make the makeup look more, um, you know, like details and a lot more better. For eyes, I'm going to use these three products. The first one is the Rare Beauty Always an Optimist Weightless Eyeshadow Primer. Second is MAC Cosmetic Eye Core Pencil, the shade Coast of Reach. And then Eyeshadow Palette from NAR Cosmetic After Glow Irresistible Eyeshadow Palette. To start, use a little bit eyeshadow primer just to prime the eyelid first. And this is natural finish, hydrating, long wear formula. So it's great for you to prime the eyelid before eyeshadow. To start, I will do the eye pencil all over the inside of the waterline. Close your eye, and then what you can see right now, because this is, I'm just going to create a depth around the eye first before I put the eyeshadow, and I put the eyeliner on the upper lash line, and blend out, outward and upward. And I'm not going to try to do like really pull out, because I think the look I'm doing somewhat still want to look wearable. So I'm not trying to do snatch or anything at all. So just a little bit of the shape before I do the eyeshadow. And then I'm going to tell her to look straight like that. So I know exactly where I want to blend the shadow and the liner. What I'm going to do first now, I'm going to smudge that corner out a little bit. A little more on the corner here. And you're going to take off some of those because I don't want to go too low. the same under the side. Next, I'm going to use a flat brush and I'm going with deep color right here. And again, you can use a, any brush you like, but I like with a flat. This way, way more control. Some people are going to use a big brush and put this and start and that's when you get color everywhere. So the best way you do this, you have more control of color. You see, I do a little bit at a time and you can do the color quite dark without worrying that coming off too much. And I really press the product in there because I want the eye a lot of depth on the outer part. I'm doing the same on this side. So the shape gonna be something like that first. Next, 
I'm gonna use like a blending brush like this. I'm gonna go with this color here. You see just a little bit. I'm gonna just blend the color here a little bit. A little bit at a time. And then you soften the edges. Just gentle. Close your eye, don't move at all. So keep blending first, go a little further. Now look to the camera, yeah. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Next, use a clean brush and just soften the edge it out. So you only put the second color, now you just blend the edge it out. And then just really just buff it out, soften everything out on the edge. Remember, you this is a clean brush. There's nothing in here, and that is your best friend when you want to blend the edges. You see the difference between this side with the clean brush and that side. So this is just from the brush alone. You can really blend it out. And this is, if you look at the, the eye, it looks like you just have another color. It looks like a transition color already, but just really just a clean brush that you buff it out. And if you want to bring back some of the depth, you can go back to that color. You can do that. But again, it still look more diffused than how it was earlier because of the transition from the blending brush that you use. And then you want to bring back some of the color. There's nothing out there. You can just back a little bit like that as well. And you keep blending with the clean brush. Just back and forth your brush to bring back some color and blend it out. And that's how you're gonna get really diffuse blending. Do the same on the side. So the brush with no color earlier, it's just a leftover color from the blending. I still gonna use a little bit. And so you blend the edge it out. So what I was thinking that I look at the eye, I think I want it a little bit more lifted. So I go to that brush that I use the dark color and I go very gentle and I just push it up a little bit with a color, not too much. You see that just a little bit because that's whatever left color in there, even you get a little more and you just do a little bit and you just brush it up. But you don't want to do too much like a, you know because i still want her eye to be very wearable so i'm trying to do like a snatch and pull out so this is the best way to do it's still very subtle and just pull out a little more on the edge of here and that's the best way to do a little bit at a time you don't need to do much let's see maria you can see that it pull up a little bit see one more time And then you just use the brush to blend it out. Again, if you want to pull more, you just put more in there. But I do very subtle, tap, 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 and blend it up. Do the same on the other side as well. I do the same on this side, a little bit of product at a time. And the thing is that we have to understand that you don't need too many shadows to create a smoky look. If you notice so far, I only use two shades. So I only use that shade and this shade so far, but I create a nice shadow look. So you don't really need, like, you know, you don't have to go like this palette's one here and one palette's right here to create a nice shadow look. You don't have to. And it's just really the blending because the blending you do is give you dimension. 
because you know you go a little more here less there it gives you this gradation of many color so you don't have to do it at all a lot of human nature is that they they get kind of lazy and we just grab so many things and you think like you know but if you actually take the time and do the blending and everything you don't really need a lot of product and you only need a little bit to create the eyeshadow shape so what i'm doing i use a little bit concealer on just the outer corner here take some of the color off and this way to keep the eye lifted you can see that just from doing that one side you can see the different just a very minor thing but you can do that to keep the shadow lifted and then just blend it out today i'm going to give maria some lashify this is the you know people like to do it themselves at home it's actually easy to do so i'm gonna do some lashes off camera and i'll be right back for lashify you don't have to put mascara on the lash at all but i'm gonna put a little bit on the lower lashes just a little bit only so maria natalie she have that little uh both little dent thing there so automatically even you try to blend the shadow it will look a little unblended so it's going to be an issue for you when you do with talent you just have to explain to them that's all i let you do really dark color but you do gradation color like this you will see look up for me you will naturally see gonna see that little light part and dark part but that's normal when it comes to makeup for blush i'm going to use the new tom ford beauty blush this is the powder blush called Love Scene, a beautiful formula. This kind of formula, I would recommend you a brush like this. Not only that, because we already have a lot of redness underneath there, you don't want to use the brush, you this way. So I just use a little bit of blush like this, and I just tap, 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 deposit the color. And Marie already naturally have a lot of redness underneath there. You don't have to use too much blush otherwise she's gonna look quite blushy so you see that just dab a little bit only and it's gonna keep you that little beautiful flush that's all you need same on this side just very gentle like that otherwise all the redness gonna come up again for highlighter Anastasia Beverly Hill Close Seeker Highlighter. This is the new shade. Really beautiful, radiant finish. I'm gonna give a very subtle highlight, not too much. That's all I'm gonna do. For lips, I'm going to use two products from Hourglass Cosmetic. The first one is the Shape and Scope Lip Liner. This is a new product they have. Same as lipstick, it's unlocked lipstick. They have a creamy finish. This is more come out with a matte finish. So for lips, Marie have beautiful lip shape. I'm gonna lift them a little bit and just overdraw a little bit on the top. I mean, she's a makeup artist herself, so she let me play with a little bit with the lip shape so that's what i'm gonna do so you see that i'm gonna do overdraw a little bit on the top here on the cupid bow mainly on the top that i'm overdraw a little bit and then go down this way same thing on this side But I overdraw mostly on the top, not all the, just the inner part. And now slightly smile for me. In the bottom here, turn back. So instead follow exactly, I'm gonna lift it up a little bit here. Just from here, 
now fix my notice yeah so this is how you direct the talent always you know you just tell them exactly how you want the lip shape so you can see clear you clearly see that i didn't draw all the way in because i do the a lot liner on me only on the outside part here because i don't want to pull the out the mouth down so i just keep it a bit more more lip dipped a little bit and maybe a little more on the top here so this lip liner is full coverage long wear formula and they are matte finish you can use you see that even you use this alone is still great as well and it transfer resistant vegan cruelty free and then for the lipstick this is more a soft matte finish it's quite pigmented and it's pretty hydrating Maria chose the shades. I gave her two shades and she chose this one. I don't have all the shades, I only have a few shades, so but the the shade this is the shade she picked and I think it's quite beautiful. So as clearly you see that we overdraw the lip a little bit. Maria wanted me to play with the shape and it's not something if you don't like overdraw don't do it we just play with the makeup it's not permanent so there's no point i know a lot of people make a big deal of that when i overdraw a lip on someone but it just you know it just makeup you can wash it off it's not something that's not permanent at all to set the makeup i'm going to set with one side beauty onto doll mattifying waterproof setting spray That's the final look guy. I hope you enjoyed the little, um, I don't want to make call a makeover, but you know, like Dawson gave Maria a beautiful haircut. I think this cool and effortless, you know, he raised the hair and I think it looked amazing. And I give her a little makeup, you know, and I hope you enjoy the look, Maria. Thank you so much for coming to the channel and let me do this. I keep asking Maria quite a bit already and he, she always busy with work. She also a makeup artist and that's why she was like oh i'm busy but finally she said yes because today is a holiday i hope everyone learned something about rosacea about color correcting and everything because i know it's a lot many steps but if you have time and you take the time to do like what i'm doing you can for a special occasion of course keep the channel always a lot of love subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and don't forget to follow all of us on instagram as well thank you Thank you.